Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Swatch Fest Day. Happy first day of October. And yesterday was my little baby, baby bear, Joy's happy birthday. So she is now one. Oh my goodness, I can't believe she's that old. Um, she's still little enough that I can snuggle her. <laughs> At least she's not two yet. Oh my goodness, you guys, the time is flying. Happy Swatch Fest Day. I'm so glad that you guys came to hang out with me today. I love reading all your comments on Saturdays, letting me know how your weeks went, how your day is going, what your favorite polish is, all the stuff you guys like to leave me in the comments on Saturday. I read all of your comments, just be sure of that. And I really love sharing this super fun day with you. If you are new to my channel, every single Saturday we have the same video where we just hang out, we talk about nail polish, we don't do a lot of business here. It's not like the rest of my videos, which are bringing you live applications of current collections so that you know what's out there, how it swatches, how it applies. You can watch it apply on my nails. I still am gonna apply these polishes for you, but they are just random polishes from my stash that don't get applied in a particular collection, whether they are really old and they just, um, you know, they're not old old, like they're not good. They're just old in my collection and I haven't had a chance to apply them or I'm just still picking up polishes willy nilly because I like to do that and I'm a crazy person. So um, let's get this out of the way right up front. All my videos this week, you've probably heard my voice. I sound horrible, I sound congested. I was actually surprised that I was even able to make any videos at all this week. Um, <clears throat> there I go right there. For about probably all of the tail end of last week and to the first part of this week, um, I was feeling my throat closing up and closing up and closing up. And it's an allergy thing, you know, all my family, we all have allergies, my kiddos. And about once or twice a year when I was living up in Northern California, you know, I've, I'm from here, so I'm used to this, but I had been living down in Southern California desert for a while, having absolutely no allergies there. Thankfully, it was a really nice respite from this kind of situation, but I came back up here and first allergy season attacks me and I'm having the same situation. So what it is, it's always this left-hand side, my glands, my tonsils, whatever it is going on back there. They just get huge, they swell, and they basically like block my whole throat. So I actually start panicking a little bit because I can't breathe. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I was dealing with. And then I didn't go to the doctor because as panicky as I get, I've learned over years of taking myself to the ER on those nights when I just can't breathe. The doctors actually don't do anything for me. They just tell me, you need to take a chill pill, like literally take a chill pill. They give me like a strong dose of ibuprofen and they just say, you have to wait this out. If you're just having a reaction and you just have to try to calm down then try to breathe through this somehow. So anyway, I was going through days where I really wasn't eating anything. I really wasn't, I was trying not to talk to anybody. That kind of helps when I don't talk and you, I kind of get to this little hill where it's really, really bad and I feel like I'm going to take myself to the hospital. And then I come down from the hill and things kind of start opening up. So anyway, if you have throat and sinus things, it's very painful in the back of your throat when it gets like so huge and raw and swollen. So that's what I've been going through. I know I mentioned last Swatch Fest that I was getting sick. Well, I got super sick and I'm just finally coming down from it, I think. And my brother's like, well, at least you got it out of the way. You probably won't have it again for a while, which is nice. It's true. Usually I have it in like June, like somewhere between June, July, and August. I get it really, really bad. I remember the year that Tim and I um, decided to meet for the first time. If you don't know, he's from Pennsylvania. I'm from here. Um, here being California. <laughs> we decided to meet and we were meeting around my birthday in August and I got really, really sick like this. Like I went to the ER the day before he was supposed to come out and we were meeting for the very first time. So I was like super, super sick and it was gonna be our first time meeting. I knew we were gonna be kissing and stuff like that and I felt horrible because I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm about to get him so, so sick. But it's a lot of it, it's allergy related. So anyway, like the doctor gave me stuff to, um, to kind of ease the pain a little bit and you know, I gargle salt water and stuff like that to kind of help the swelling go down. But <laughs> Tim didn't care at all. We met up the next day. I was like having a fever from, really not eating or drinking very much for the past like four days, which is what happens to me when my throat closes up. And he like didn't care at all, of course. It was our first time meeting, so he just wanted to hold hands and kiss and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, 
I might be about to kill this guy, you know, I'm about to give him some horrible disease or something. And of course, I now know, you know, that was eight years ago. I now know it's not a disease, it's just something that happens to me. But anyway, this is long story time in the beginning of Swatch of Us. I know some of you like long story time, some of you really don't like it and you get mad. I'm sorry if you're mad at me, I'm sorry. But um, my week has been consumed with, and it's still like really, really, t like, owie, right if I touch it. So, okay, that's enough, but I just want to explain to you why I sound like this and in all my videos. I didn't explain it in any of them, but I'm explaining it to you now. I've been pretty sick. So, um, let's get into it. We're going to look at a polish in every shade of the rainbow. I think I have one in every color today, so yay. Let's get going. Okay, so for red, we are going to look at a pure ice polish, and this is called Wear Red. <laughs> okay, I'll wear red. I was actually kind of pinning this for a pink polish, and then I was looking at the title, and I was like, okay, you pushed me over the edge. It's red. This is a really beautiful, playful red with a little bit of pink and a lot of white in it. You can feel, you, you know, when you put it on, it feels like it really does have a lot of a, a white base because it is a bright red. Um, this does have a nice two-coater formula. I see you guys telling me in the comments, you know, I actually one comment in particular, somebody said, I'd always thought that Pure Ice was like a kid's brand. It was like for children, so it really wasn't going to be very good. No, no, no. Pure Ice is really, really good. They are um, under $2 at Walmart. They are a great brand. They're kind of like simple colors in that way. They always have a great formula. They have really fun shades. They try different things and they give it to us for a great price. So, love me some pure ice, I thought this one was great. Let's go on to pink. I picked this one up this week because I was at Sally Beauty using my 15% there and I noticed that all of their China Glaze were buy one get one free, which China Glaze are, I think are just under $7 at Sally Beauty when you have the card or something. And um, buy one get one free that makes them $3.50 a piece, which is basically the same price you can get them for online on my favorite shops, which are Trans Design and Head to Toe Beauty. You guys hear me talk about them all the time. So you're getting them for the same price as that, but without the shipping. So that's really nice. I picked up six polishes. I might go back and pick some more up. They don't have a lot of China Glaze there that I don't already own. Um, but it is always nice to pick up some of my favorites for grab bags and stuff like that for giveaways. So anyway, I did not have this one. And this one's called Purple Panic. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny because this is a pink polish. Like, this looks pink to me. If this looks purple to you, that's fine. But this looks pink to me. But it does have like a strong, kind of fuchsia-y, shimmery, lustery thing going through it, and it dries neon. So I was like, oh, okay, I get it. You can call yourself Purple Panic if you want to. No, um, this is really pretty. It's really bright. It does dry matte though, so you can add a nice glossy top coat on top. I thought this was good. It wasn't streaky like some of China Glaze neon's pol neon polishes are, especially the super duper matte ones. Um, so yeah, I thought it was pretty good. favorite in a while. My YouTube favorite this week is Lisa Eldridge. And I know a lot of people already follow her, so this isn't like a new YouTuber to be aware of, but I really like her channel because for a woman that already has so much notoriety and like everybody knows who she is, knows she's great. She's been a makeup artist for so long. She's a very humble woman, but she takes the time to make these really great um, features on her YouTube channel, which I feel like I learned from. And they're really fun at the same time, and I just really like that she's so humble and 
she's she just seems very approachable at the same time and she just offers a great wealth of knowledge so if you've never tried her channel I really enjoy it it's almost like watching like um, like an educational channel almost it's really fun all right so orange today um, I have this awesome orange from satin gland line from Sally Hansen I found it at Best Buy no 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 I didn't <laughs> I found it at Big Watts this is called Sun Sheen and I think this might be my favorite one from this part of Sally Hansen's line that has been discontinued that I've ever tried. I love this so much. This is like the exact color of orange that I love to wear and I don't really love orange polish that much. But this has, it's orange with a very strong golden tangerine shimmer going all throughout it. It's so beautiful. I love this so much. So um, I have actually decided, I put like in D-stash most of the polishes from this line but I think this one is the best one. Very good. Alright, my yellow polish is going to be my A plus polish of the week this week. It's what I have on my nails. So I'm going to put something else in here, but I want to warn you guys, this is probably the ugliest thing I've ever put on my nails. And I've tried a lot of polish, right? A lot of polish, this is the ugliest thing. So you guys saw this show up on my Snapchat a while ago. Um, this is a bottle from Claire's that has pink, green, blue, and then peach polish in it. And I picked it up going, well, I obviously have to try that and see why the heck they would do that. Why would you layer colors of polish that's just going to end up mixing when you put them on your nail and looking like, what do all these colors turn when you mix them together? A yucky, yucky brown color. If you guys have ever played finger paints with your kids or with yourself when you were in school or whatever. So I went ahead and tried this and it is indeed so disgusting. Um, basically the brush just picks up each of them and in theory maybe what they were thinking is that it would paint like a cool rainbow look on your nail like distinctly those colors or that it would kind of look like water marbling maybe well no it doesn't it just looks really really disgusting so also the weird thing about this is it didn't even feel like nail polish it felt like I was putting like frosting on my nails this is so gross okay you're ready to see it let's go Alright, so I want to tell you guys what media I watched this week. I even had to write it down because my brain forgets stuff. I know that some of you were mentioning last week that you were wondering what media I've been watching because I haven't mentioned it in the few, uh, past few weeks, so I'm going to tell you. So I watched four movies this week. <clears throat> First off, I watched Predator. Tim got to pick a movie. Surprise, surprise, right? And so we watched Predator. He was like, you've never seen Predator? Let's watch it, which it actually was entertaining. I thought I was going to... Well, I did fall asleep for a little bit of it, but I thought I was going to sleep through all of it. Because the first time you see the Predator with like the graphics of back then, you're just like, oh my goodness. But I actually kind of got into it and I was like, you know, go Arnold, go. You know, like not intensely, but enough. I was into it enough. I thought they actually made the monster look somewhat intimidating. So yeah, I thought it was okay. Um, the next one we watched was Angry Birds, which was of course for the kids. But I feel like it did have some fun, you know, adult humor in it. I thought it was cute. I feel like it was definitely a movie that didn't really need to be made, though, because it's just a video. It's just, you know, it's just a game for your phone that doesn't really have a storyline. But 
eh, whatever. I mean, I didn't want to go see it in the theater, but watching it at home, I was like, okay. And I also liked, I think the thing that kept me going was I could really recognize the voice talents. Specifically, Jason Sudeikis and Maya Rudolph really kept me interested in, you know, really wanting to hear what the people were saying. I thought that they were great voice talents for the show. Okay, I watched another show called Me Before You. Sorry, Me Before You. Which, first of all, I thought was hilarious that they have the Khaleesi portraying a woman that's supposed to be super frumpy and like not desirable, which is so funny because she's the exact opposite in Game of Thrones. But she is the main character in this um, show. Is her name Amelia Clark? Anyway, she, she plays a woman whose last name is also Clark. And she's being a home caregiver, which if you ha I've done that before, that used to be my job. Um, was being an ho in-home caregiver for an elderly person. Well, she's being an in-home caregiver for a man who has no feeling anywhere but, I think, anywhere below his neck. And he's a young man, and so he has this devastating tale because he was in an accident and he used to have a very rich, he had an affluent, really fun life, just going and doing whatever he wanted, and now he's frankly just miserable and wants to die. And so she enters his life and she's trying to just bring some lightness and some life back to his life and she's a really fun quirky woman so anyway it's a story of her growth as she's you know trying to enrich this man's life and you know his story mixed with hers i don't want to spoil the ending for you because as you start watching the movie you realize that there are different two definite endings and in all stories like this there's like <clears throat> okay are they going to go with what would most realistically happen or are they going to go with like the fairy tale Hollywood chose an ending for you know a long time we only saw these Hollywood endings where it's like okay this just this wouldn't really happen anyway I had a lot of fun with watching the film because I feel like it's very beautiful there are some beautiful scenic elements of the film but also just watching the two main actors of course the Khaleesi is gorgeous um, Amelia Clark is absolutely gorgeous and the man that is I can't think of his name right now he was in um, he was in um, what is the movie? Hunger Games. That's the movie. Um, he's a very beautiful man to look at. So, you know, in respect to that, it was a nice to look at film. Did I love the ending of the movie? Not really, but you know. Anyway, I thought it was still I thought it was still a decent movie to watch. Not my favorite. And then the last one we watched is Deja Vu, and my dad talks about this movie all the time. It's a Denzel Washington film. It's my dad's favorite movie. So Tim and I sat down to watch it the other day because my dad was here last, and I know they're coming for Joy's birthday. My dad was talking to Tim about this movie, and after he left, he's like, I've never seen that movie. And I was like, oh, it's good. I watched it a long time ago. And he's like, well, we should probably watch it so that I have something to talk to your dad about next time he comes and wants to talk about the movie. So we watched it. It's very good. I really like it. Um, Tim was just kind of like, eh, but I liked it. I really liked it. It made me want to watch, like, every Denzel movie after that. So, um, those are the movies I watched this week really quickly. Big Brother ended. I was really happy with the ending. Um, <clears throat> Dating Naked ended. You guys know I like these really stupid, cheesy reality show, um, TV shows. So, anyway, that ended. Um, and then Survivor started and... Um, Once Upon a Time started, which are shows that we always get really excited for. So you can let me know in the comments which fall premiere you are really excited for or is yet to come up that you're really excited for. But I have one other question. Bones, the television show, one of my favorite shows ever. I remember in last season I read somewhere that this last season was going to be their last season. But did it end, you guys? Because if it ended, it ended in a really weird place. Like that last episode where she finds out who the person is that's been like that puppet master guy or whatever and then it just ended is there not an episode after that because that was a really weird way to end the season did I miss something did I miss an episode I've you know searched and that's the last episode I could find so I'm totally confused it felt like a mid-season end or something did it feel like that to you guys clue me in if I'm missing something because that's one of my favorite shows and I'm gonna be sad if that's the way it ended so um anyway that's it for media sorry I know that was long but I know some of you have been asking for that all right, so my green polish for the week comes from CoverGirl, and this is another polish that I picked up at Big Lots for $1.50. Um, this is called Give Them the Green Light, and this one was just okay. It didn't have a very good formula. It was kind of watery, kind of just weak feeling on the nail. At two coats, it was better, but, you know, it just really wasn't my favorite.
All right, this next polish I really did like, and wow, here's a nice bright polish for you, right? This is Butter London, um, I don't know how to say that, Kex, K-E-K-S. Um, if you guys know what that means, um, if any Brits want to tell me what Kex is, that would be cool to know. I could just Google it, but it's funner to ask you guys. Or should I say, it's more fun to ask you guys. Okay, so this is a really, really bright electric blue. I thought this might stain me really badly. I didn't have staining issues, although I didn't leave it on longer than like an hour. So anyway, this is really pretty. I've tried some Butter Londons that have not been so good in the recent past, so I was glad that this one was good. It's really red and beautiful. This was a contender for my top spot. But another one just kind of stole the show. you guys what's on my face real quick like I like to do because I know you guys like it so now I like to do it so um, first up I pulled out a foundation that I hadn't worn in a while I haven't heard anybody mention this in a long time on any beauty channels at least this is the Maybelline dream wonder fluid touch in porcelain ivory I actually really like this foundation I like it a lot it goes on and it doesn't give me that feeling of just like oh, I'm feeling stifled under my foundation which probably means that it's kind of a light to medium coverage, which I th I'm thinking that that's the kind I like because I don't want to, I don't like it when I feel like too uh, cakey on my face. So I like that. A couple that I've been using a lot lately, so I won't go into the NARS concealer and the Anastasia dip brow in caramel. On my cheeks today, I'm wearing this rose blush. It's called Tea Rose from Milani number no. eight. I really do enjoy it when I'm going for something really pink. And then on my cheeks, I'm wearing this highlighter from Wet n Wild, and Wet n Wild has a new display out. There's like four polishes, four lip glosses, one of which I'm wearing today. I'll tell you what it is in a minute. There's this highlighter bar, there's eyelashes, and there's maybe one other thing. So anyway, I picked up, oh yeah, there's um, the other thing I'm wearing today, which I'll tell you in just a second. So this is nice. It's in the shade Holly Goldhead, Holly Goldhead. And you actually get like a gold and kind of a coppery gold shade in there. And I'm wearing it today and I thought it was good. And nothing from Wet n Wild is very expensive, so I wanted to give everything a try. I also picked up this loose pigment. There are four in the collection. And this one's called Kung Fu Lightning. And I used it as an inner corner highlight. There are probably lots of uses for this. That's just what I used it for today. It has a nice cap. Let me show you. It's nice, it's, it completely covers it, so you can go like this, and you're not gonna dump it, which I really like. And then you can just flip the cap open, and then you have, you know, you can pour it out. So I really like that, that's super great. All loose powder should have something like that. So for my eyes today, I used a palette that I haven't used in a while. It's the Vice Limited, it's this bright electric green, a uh, very limey green. And then I'm gonna hold this up here and try to zoom in for you guys so you can see it. So I went down here on the bottom right with Laced, and that went all over my lid and in my crease, and then I went um, with a Nameless, which ended up being nice and dark, I really enjoyed it, and it has a little bit of sheen to it, and then I took Vaporize, which I hadn't used at all, which is a nice gray, kind of taupey gray, but it has some shimmer in it as well, and then I used Road Stripe just up right next to my eyebrow, which actually has um, some blue shimmer in it. I wanted to make sure and make use of it when I saw it the other day and I thought, wow, I really haven't played with that that much at all. Um, for liner, I used my Stila Stay All Day Waterproof in black. On my eyelashes, I used Miss Manga, but I think I'm going to toss her. She's been in my makeup kit for a while. I used my Ardell Demi Wispy Falsies. I shouldn't say my because I go through a lot of them, so just a pair of them. And then on my lips today, I used the gold lips, the gold um, lip gloss that I picked up from the Wet n Wild limited edition release that the, the um, other things that I showed you came from. So there are four lipsticks or lip glosses. This one's called Moxie Brown and that's what it just looks like just on its own like not topping over anything and I really thought it was fun. They did have like a darker gold, like an orangey gold and then a much lighter gold. I'm almost thinking about going back for some more because I really 
liked this and it's so inexpensive. It was like $1.29 or something. So yeah, I really liked it. All right guys, so purple today, I picked up Viking and a Winter Wonderland from, I just can't not say it like that, from Marshalls the other day when I went. They had a lot of new polishes there, so check your Marshalls if you haven't been in a little while. This is just a very, very deep purple. Really great for like your deep, almost black purple. It has a great formula. I like it. polish today I have another Avon for you this one's called rave and this is just a really beautiful copper metallic it's definitely a copper rosy metallic it's you could see a lot of pink in there this is fun this is beautiful I really like this at two coats it's nice and bright um, just like it looks here in the bottle did not disappoint guys I pulled this out this week and I have to get working on it again you remember when I was working on this last year and you guys who were with me last year right after joy was born I have these stockings for all my kids I got the idea from my sister who um, also makes them for their kids it's like if it's a felt kit so this is all felt and they're sequins and during last year's vlogmas you guys probably saw me working on this and I was just trying to bust my butt getting it ready for her, for Joy, for last year's Christmas. Needless to say, it did not get done. So I got quite a bit done, but there's still Santa and there's a little elf that's helping him put things on the tree and all the toys at the bottom that are not on there. These are really fun though. I might have already gotten myself into trouble by picking this up so late this year, but if you are fast, like if you like needlework and if you're fast at this and you want to work on one for yourself or for a gift or for your kids even you can pick I mean I think I can't remember if I go to Michael's or Joann's I go to them online though you can also get it from Amazon online is it has a much better selection than in store but it's really fun I like it it's a fun pastime because I feel like I'm in, I'm in school again because it's, it's really fun like cutting out and just sewing the little pieces and there's just lots of little tasks to do it comes with this big sheet of like 150 different things you have to do to get it to be its finished state. So I'm pulling this out again and I really need to get it done because I don't want Joy to go another year without her having the stocking too, just like everybody else. I'll have to get them all out when it gets into December and I'll show you guys everybody's stockings. But anyway, this is Joy's and I'm gonna start working on it again. Okay, so for glitter, we're looking at a polish from Catrice and this one's called Stardust and actually I don't know, I really love the Catrice polishes that I received as a gift a long time ago and you guys always wonder where I get them. I actually received them from a friend Sue. Hi Sue. Um, she sent them to me from Switzerland so they're not accessible here in the States unfortunately at least not even though know, you'd have to look for them online but I've really liked everything so far and the Crushed Crystals line especially they're textured and they're usually really bright and fun. This one um, the color is beautiful it's like a very dusty kind of um, purpled out silver but it didn't get very opaque in two coats which I was just a little bit bummed about so I, I really love all the Catrice polishes but this one I wasn't as head over heels with as most of the other ones it is still very pretty though I really like that kind of steely purple so yeah I really like the color but I just wish it had been a little bit more opaque
Alright guys, we are on to our A plus polish. So, do you know what it is? I'll be surprised if you know what it is. You might already know though. Because obviously, if I picked up a lip gloss, a highlighting bar, and a pigment from that Wet n Wild display, I was gonna pick up a polish. And actually, you already saw them on my Snapchat. If you follow me there, come hang out with me on Snapchat. I love Snapchat. Um, so I picked up the four polishes that come in the display, and this one today is called Studio Glitter and Gold, and it's just a very light yellowy gold. It's what's on my nails. This is a great in two coats, and this wasn't like the best polish ever, and there were some really other great polishes in my stash, you know, in my 10 that I was picking from that could have taken this spot, but Wet n Wild does such a great job for, you know, such a small price. It's like, what are they, like $1.99? And then usually you can find them on sale, so they're like $1.50. Such a good price. Um, I have to admit the wand is a little bit big, so I make a mess sometimes on this polish, whereas lots of times I won't make a mess anymore swatching so often. But I just thought this color is so pretty. It's a very light champagne-y, very delicate um, gold that has some um, silver specks all going through it. It's really, really pretty. It's not just like a straight up gold, like oh, I'm bored of you, you stinking gold. No. Um, <laughs> anyway, I think it's really pretty and um, it's just a great price. So that's what stole the spot. These do say limited edition on them right on the bottle though. So I picked up all of the things from that display in my Rite Aid. So I would urge you to go look in yours. I think I spotted it there right after they set it out because nothing was taken yet. But this stuff, I think it's gonna fly off that display pretty fast. So I would hurry if I were you to kind of look out for them if you're a polished scouter like I am. Okay guys, so that was my whole review. I hope you had some fun with me today. As always, let me know in the comments below what your favorite polish of the week was, what you're doing this week. Thank you for coming to hang out with me again this Saturday. I love you guys so much. Go out and have a super duper great weekend so that you have lots to tell me about in next Saturday Swatch Fest. Have a great day. I love you guys. Bye. Mwah. Um, let's talk about the black first. So this is called Liquid Leather. If you don't already have this, this is a really great black. I just had never picked it up because there's a lot of blacks out there. But this is actually really great. I've used it a lot since pulling out the polishes for this collection to get ready for this review. I've used it in a lot of nail art just as basis for things. 